Ethereum has become one of the most popular cryptocurrencies in the past few years since its creation in 2015. And its price really shows that. It trades at about $1,500 right now. So what is the big deal with Ethereum? And why do people treat it like it's the new Bitcoin? And what's even the difference between Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin? So before I can get into the Ethereum explanation, I need to just do a quick recap of Bitcoin just for the people that are new to crypto in general, since Bitcoin is what Ethereum was born out of. So Bitcoin is a decentralized digital money with no intermediary like a bank, so it can't be directly devalued by any government or Federal Reserve because it isn't fiat. It can't just be created out of thin air. You actually have to do some work to get it, and that work is called mining. And each Bitcoin transaction is validated and confirmed by the entire Bitcoin network, which the mining process also takes care of. And short of a major solar flare, it's pretty much impossible to shut down this network. So if Bitcoin can decentralize money, what else can be decentralized? How about voting or how about real estate contracts? Uh, those are still handled by a centralized authority. In fact, most contracts in general tend to be handled by centralized authorities. So what if we could have these handled on the blockchain network as well? Uh, there was no such thing as blockchain technology before the invention of Bitcoin. That was actually one of the byproducts of creating Bitcoin because it combines several other technologies in existence, such as cryptography, decentralized networks, and proof of work. And it's important to understand that Bitcoin is not blockchain. Bitcoin is to blockchain in the same way that Netflix is to the internet. It's just one of many programs uh, that take advantage of that technology, but others can use it too for different things, and you obviously wouldn't think of the internet as just Netflix. So this is where Ethereum comes in. We needed to do things that are more complicated than just sending money from one person to another. The Ethereum network is essentially a DIY platform for decentralized applications. In fact, you can create your own decentralized application that no person controls, not even yourself, uh, by writing one using Solidity, which is the Ethereum programming language. So the Ethereum platform, it has thousands of decentralized machines running on it, very similar to Bitcoin. And once a program is launched on the Ethereum network, those machines that are known as nodes will make sure that it executes the way that it is supposed to. Ethereum is the infrastructure for running these decentralized apps worldwide. It's not really a currency, it's more of a platform, and the goal of this platform is to decentralize the internet. So how does Ethereum actually work? It's all about the solidity, which is used to write smart contracts, the logic that runs dApps. And you can think of a you can think of them like a real life contract. So basically real life contract, it is an if then or an if else statement. So if I pay my electricity bill on time, then the power company is going to continue giving me power. The lights are going to work. Else, if I don't, then my lights are going to get cut off. So that's exactly how Ethereum smart contracts work. Ethereum developers, they code the conditions into their program or their DAP, uh, which just stands for a decentralized application. And then the Ethereum network executes it. So the smart contract, it handles all of the aspects of the contract. It handles the management, the enforcement, the performance, and the payment. If I had a smart contract used for paying the electric bill, they wouldn't need to come collect the payment from me, or if I didn't pay, they wouldn't need to go and cut the lights off. The contract knows if the money has been sent, and so it's going to automatically cut off my lights if payment hasn't been received, or let me have lights if I paid it on time. Now, you can probably think that there are some downsides to these smart contracts, and it's the same kind of downsides that come into play whenever you're coding any type of application that's going to take over an activity that is normally handled by humans. So with my electric bill example, 
A smart contract is just going to disable my electric service the moment payment isn't received, but it doesn't take into account any other factors like extenuating circumstances. You know, maybe I'm living paycheck to paycheck like most people do, and I don't receive that paycheck until a few days after my bill is actually due. With a traditional power company, you can usually just call them up and then work something out. You know, you can get your due date changed, etc. Um, or if there's somebody living in my house with a medical condition, maybe they need some type of breathing machine to be plugged into power to literally keep them alive. Uh, if you have a situation like that, usually the power company isn't going to cut you off. But Ethereum's smart contracts, despite their name, they don't really have a lot of nuance to them. They're actually very strict and they can't take any considerations into account. The contracts are also immutable. So once they are deployed to the Ethereum network, there's no changing them. Even the original author can't change them. And this is very similar to Bitcoin transactions. You know, once you hit send on a Bitcoin transaction, there's no way that can be reversed. You can't call up a bank. You can't call up Satoshi and ask for your Bitcoins back. Uh, it just isn't going to happen. Except Ethereum, again, it was built to create really complex contracts. And since these contracts can't be changed by anyone once they're deployed, they actually become extremely difficult to secure. Um, there's already enough complication in real life with contracts. You know, you oftentimes need to get multiple lawyers involved on either side of the contract transaction and change things for days or weeks and have the addition or removal of multiple clauses to it before coming to an agreement on something that all parties can agree on. But then on Ethereum, there's no judges, there's no authorities that you can bring this contract to to override it once it's been deployed. And there's already been a major example of a failure to secure smart contracts on Ethereum with the DAO scandal. So DAO, uh, D-A-O, stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And it was kind of like a hedge fund. So it allowed users to deposit money and then get returns based on investments that the DAO made and the decisions to invest themselves, uh, you know, what they were going to invest in, were also decentralized and crowdsourced. So really great idea. Uh, and a lot of other people thought so because the DAO managed to raise $150 million in Ethereum's currency, Ether. And this was back when it was trading for about $20 each. But the code of the smart contract, it wasn't secured very well. And someone figured out how to drain the DAO out of money. Uh, so most people consider the person who drained the DAO to be a hacker. But some other people would argue that they were just a person taking advantage of the loopholes that they found in the DAO smart contract. And it's no different than a lawyer taking advantages of loopholes that they find in a contract to either get their client out of it if it's not a very good contract or to allow their client to extract more money from the other parties uh, if you know that's the goal of what they want to do. But after this happened, most people in the Ethereum community felt like the DAO incident was a big problem. And they decided that, you know what, the code, the smart contracts are no longer law. And they changed the Ethereum rules to basically revert all of that money that went into the DAO. They basically uh, you know, rolled things back and just let all the money go back to the original people. Basically, the devs bailed them out. Uh, so the small minority of people who agreed with the original terms of Ethereum, they stuck to the old protocol after it was forked, which resulted in the creation of Ethereum Classic, which is actually the original Ethereum. You know, that's the reason why they call it the classic one, right? Uh, that's the original one. It has the old protocols and the new Ethereum that we love today is the altered one. Uh, so now that you understand Ethereum, you're probably wondering how exactly can this be used as a currency? Well, to run a decentralized network, a lot of people need a lot of money to build something that is more powerful than a supercomputer, but is distributed all over the world to run the code of the smart contracts to execute the dApps. 
So these rigs are usually made out of many graphics cards, as many as you can get your hands on. Uh, they're also the reason why anytime there's a new powerful graphics card released that you can't buy them for weeks, months, uh, maybe even years because all of the Ethereum miners out there automatically buy them all up and add them into their rigs. Uh, you know, if you can manage to get cheap enough electricity, you can actually make some decent money mining these, especially if you have a lot of money to invest in the graphics cards. Uh, and you can just use them in a short enough period of time and then resell them. But yeah, the backbone of this network, which is basically shitloads of graphics cards and a whole lot of electricity to keep them running and cool them, costs a lot of money. And that's where Ether comes into play. So when people are talking about the price of Ethereum, they're actually talking about Ether, the currency that is used to incentivize people to run these rigs on the Ethereum network. So this works the same way where Bitcoin miners essentially get paid to maintain the ledger. Um, and in order to deploy a smart contract to the Ethereum network, its author has to pay some Ether to do so. So this is done, uh, well, mainly so that people are actually going to optimize their contracts as much as possible and not have a bunch of crap in them because the larger your contract is, the more complicated it is, the more Ethereum you have to pay to get it e executed. And also to not just send frivolous contacts or contracts uh, to the network in the first place. So in this video, you learned what Ethereum is, you learned how it works, and you learned its main purpose, which is executing smart contracts to run dApps. And you also learned about Ether, the actual currency that is used on the Ethereum network and how Ethereum is given its value. So I hope this video answered all of your Ethereum questions. Have a great day.